Madness seems to be a prominent reoccurring characteristic in this series, with some unfortunately being born with a mental disability and others spiraling into madness due to tragic life circumstances. I've talked to death about Targaryen madness, so I'll just skip over all the royal crazies and rumored crazies. If you want to hear about them, I'll leave a link at the end of the video where I discuss that topic. Targaryen madness affecting half the family is a huge exaggeration, stemming from their enemies in the Seven Kingdoms, who were appalled by their tradition of incestuous marriages in order to keep their bloodline pure. This did happen to cause Joffrey to be psychotic, however. If a child born from siblings has a higher chance of having birth defects, I would think it would be a lot worse between twins. Cersei and Jaime Lannister have been messing around with each other in secret since they were children. Even after marriage, Cersei would never let Robert Baratheon father any of her children. He would stumble into their bed too drunk to remember what happened the next morning anyways. Soon after the wedding, Jaime would be the father of their first child. It was clear from an early age something was off with Joffrey. The most notable incident being the time he killed and cut open a pregnant cat's stomach to see the kittens inside. He showed one of the kittens to who he believed to be his dad, Robert Baratheon. In his shock and disgust, he hit the child hard enough to knock two baby teeth out. Cersei didn't help things by enabling her horrible child. Robert didn't care for him much and was an absent father to all the kids he thought were his children. But Joffrey sought after his approval. It's why he tried to have Bran Stark killed after his fall. You're not supposed to be here. No one's supposed to be here. It's a mercy. He's dead already. No! He hired an assassin because he heard Robert Baratheon say it would be better to put Bran out of his misery. Joffrey was spoiled rotten, and soon Cersei would not be able to control him. The cruel heir even began tormenting his younger brother Tommen. Peter Baelish and Elena Tyrell took his life before he became the next Mad King. He was only like 13 when he died, and Tyrion believes he would have been much worse than the Mad King himself, who Robert Baratheon usurped after his crazy actions did a rebellion. Joffrey was so rotten that even his biological father Jaime believed he deserved his painful death, where the poison made him claw at his neck. A few more years of living and he would have likely turned out to be like Ramsay Bolton. He's so far gone from just being considered sadistic. I would say it's safe to call him mad. Ramsay was born a monster. Even his conception story is horrible. While his father, Roose Bolton, was out hunting, he realized some commoners under the Bolton's land decided to marry. Just because they didn't inform their lord of the wedding, he hanged the husband and raped the wife beneath the corpse. Well, she would end up getting pregnant, and when she presented the child to Roose, he nearly killed her before noticing the child had his pale, cold eyes. He supported his child and the mother, but wanted the whole thing kept a secret. She had a hard time raising Ramsay though, because of how wild and unruly he became. Bruce already had a legitimate heir, who was nothing like the cruel child. His name was Domerick Bolton, and he hoped to have a close relationship with his little half-brother. But right before the main story begins, Ramsay poisoned him and hoped he would be the heir to House Bolton. His plan worked, and now he has enough power to live on all his sick games, like hunting women in forests and skinning people alive. The Mountain is a more complicated case. His over-the-top cruelty and rage can be credited to his severe migraines. His squire made a remark about him having to constantly drink milk of the poppy to numb his pain. But all these painkillers haven't affected his fighting instincts. Severe and recurring headaches are one of the symptoms of gigantism, and Gregor Clegane is almost 8 feet tall, or he could have possibly just been hit badly in the head. His short temper is so bad that he burned his little brother's face by pressing it into an open fire for just playing with one of his toys as a child. He didn't even care much for the toy. But Gregor is also believed to be responsible for the death of their father and sister, along with his first two wives. He only ever leaves his home to join a battlefield or a tourney, and his keep in the Westerlands is a grim place. Servants are known to go missing, and his brother Sandor Clegane claims he killed a man simply for snoring too loudly. His short temper and cruelty is so bad there's an argument to be made about him being psychotic. And then there's a the guy who experimented with his body after Ober Martell tried to put him out of his misery. The mad scientist of this world himself, Kyburn. I don't really think Kyburn is crazy, but his lack of morality is an excuse for the sake of science. All he cares about is getting new test subjects to understand the human body better. His curiosity led him to opening up living people. He's completely unmoved by their screams. Seems like a sociopath to me. He may be the greatest healer in Westeros from all the knowledge his experiments have brought him, but the Citadel still took away his chain and revoked his status of maester for his unethical practices. All this tinkering with live bodies have taught him what makes people tick. Kyburn truly knows how to torture someone, and when Cersei tasks him with forcing a confession out of Marjorie Tyrell's favorite singer when she's trying to set her up for treason, 
he puts the man through hell. The singer actually went by his stage name, the Blue Bard, and he went real far with the whole blue theme. Everything he wore was blue, his eyes were blue, and he even dyed his hair blue. Even in the black cells, all they got from him were denials, prayers, and pleas for mercy. Before long, blood was streaming down his chin from all his broken teeth, and he wet his dark blue breeches three times over. Yet still, the man persisted in his lies. Is it possible we have the wrong singer, Cersei asked. All things are possible, your grace. Have no fear. It only took a single day in Kyburn's care to make the blue bard say whatever Cersei wanted him to. By the end of his torture, he was missing some teeth, an eye, and even a nipple. Cersei actually kicked things off by smashing his loon into his face, shattering it. But confessing to messing around with the married queen Marjorie meant the blue bard would have to be taken into the Faith's custody, be punished and tried. They also tortured him, and in the last book, it's believed he has since gone mad. Shame. Shame. There's a bunch of other characters in the story who were driven mad. Ramsay completely broke Theon when he was his prisoner and companion, and Bran definitely did something to Hodor, even if the books aren't that far into the story yet. <laughs> Within the latest supplementary book, Fire and Blood, we get some seriously dark backstory on a Targaryen princess who lived 250 years before the start of the story. I know I said in this video that I wouldn't be talking about Targaryens, but trust me this isn't really about her. She married a very minor noble named Andrew Farman. He was the second son to Lord Farman, who ruled over an island in the Westerlands. This match didn't really make much sense, but Rhaena Targaryen kinda did whatever she wanted. She really never cared for her husband much though and he was pretty neglected. He was unskilled, couldn't read or write, and a larger man who spent way too much time drinking. With no respect or any attention paid to him, he grew deeply depressed and would spend days alone in a room doing nothing. His boredom, loneliness, and jealousy of his wife's friends was turning into resentment. Eventually, he snapped and poisoned all the people Raina cared about. And before her wrath could reach him, he leapt out a window so she wouldn't have the satisfaction of having him killed. Moving forward in the story's history, around 75 years before the start of Game of Thrones, there's the character remembered as Mad Donnell. She was the lady of House Lothstan and the reason for her family's extinction. She was believed to dabble in black magic and rumored to bathe in blood while also having feasts of human flesh. Now, parents of misbehaving children try to scare their kids straight by saying giant bats will come and take them to Mad Donnell if they keep acting up. But the most fun, crazy character to talk about is Patchface. A jester who Shireen Baratheon calls Patches. His backstory is a head-scratcher. Moving closer to the current story, around 20 years ago, the Mad King was still in power and it was time for him to find a suitable wife for his heir, Rhaegar. So he sent his cousin Stefan Baratheon to Essos to find a match with Valyrian blood for his son. Stefan didn't find Rhaegar a wife in the huge city of Volantis, but he did find a jester slave. This young jester's wit impressed him so much he bought his freedom and wanted to bring him home to entertain his children and hopefully teach his son Stannis to laugh. Well, their ship got caught in a storm just outside their castle and everyone died while Robert and Stannis watched his parents die in front of him. Three days later, Patchface, who gets his name for the green and red patches tattooed on his face, washed up on the shores of Storm's End. He was thought to be dead, but he coughed up water and survived. He's a completely different person than he was just a couple days ago. He's completely lost his mind and can barely be understood. After the accident, he started twitching and regularly walks kind of weird. He speaks in riddles that are later discovered through prophecy. Fool's blood, king's blood, blood on a maiden's thigh, but chains for the guests and chains for the bridegroom. I, I, I. A clear foreshadowing of the Red Wedding, shortly before it happened. Patchface says a bunch of cryptic stuff like this that no one at the time understands, but has all us fans going crazy trying to decipher. He hangs around Shireen Baratheon, who's pretty much the only person who enjoys him. Melisandre believes him to be dangerous, far more than just a simple fool. In her visions, she sees Patchface's lips covered in blood with skulls around him. A lot of what he says is hard to interpret, which is probably why he was never in Game of Thrones. Nothing can really top all Patches, so this will be an appropriate place to stop. With the amount of characters in the story and all its lore, I'm sure I've missed some, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see y'all soon. Thanks for watching.